Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2019 Advanced. In this section we're going to look in more detail at customising reports and in order to do this I'm going to customise one of the most commonly used reports in Project 2019. Now if you've used an earlier version of Project you may be very familiar with the Project Overview. And in versions before Project 2013 the Project Overview looks very different to the way it looks now. The one big advantage of the modern approach to a project overview is that it can be highly customized to suit your specific requirements. Now we're using version 11 of the website project here and I'm going to go to the report tab and go to the dashboards drop down and click on project overview. Now depending on themes, styling, etc, your project overview may not look quite the same as mine, but don't worry too much about that because that won't significantly change what we're covering in this section for you. Now one thing you'll note here is that I've got some page breaks switched on. And I usually work with page breaks switched on because I find that that helps me at least have an understanding of the width of the report and how much I'm going to fit on. So let's now look at the elements of this particular report. In the previous section I discussed headings and once again here if I click within Project Overview you can see that it's a text box with the word Project Overview in it. You can also see that because of the way this Project Overview is made it's actually rather carelessly put together because the text box containing the word Project Overview is actually overlapping the text box above and I'm talking about the one here, the one above the column chart. Now of course you don't really see this because the text box doesn't have a border and the text box itself is transparent. But sometimes when you do this kind of thing and particularly if for example the text in the text box might be variable, you could run into some trouble. So I do tend to try and make sure that there isn't really any possibility of the elements in my report running over each other. So I'm going to drag that text box in slightly so that it doesn't overlap. Now we're looking here at the project overview and the first thing I'm going to do is save this as my copy of a project overview. So I'm going to go up to manage and I'm going to click on rename report. And I'm going to call this DA Project Overview and click on OK. And in doing that, I've now actually got two versions of the Project Overview. I've got the original version and I now have my new version, DA Project Overview. And that's the one that I'm going to be working on. So the first change I'm going to make is to Project Overview. I'm just going to make some very minor changes here. So I'm going to click in my text box, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select paragraph and I'm going to align it to the center. Now this will be a very small change because the text box isn't very wide and click on OK and you should see that that just nudged over slightly. Now at the moment I'm not going to do any other stylistic changes to that heading. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now the next item in the report says April the 1st 2019 and then I have another text box for December the 22nd 2019 and of course we should recognize those as the start and finish dates of this project. Now although that looks straightforward enough if you think about how those dates managed to get there you may wonder just how you find for a report the start and finish dates of the project. You may also be wondering how they are presented in the way that they are in this report. Now if I click in this finish date somewhere, and this is usually the way to find out how something is working, you will see how that particular element of the report is implemented, because it's implemented as a table. And the way you can tell that is by looking up to the ribbon and seeing that when I click in there, the table tools were actually enabled. So in terms of how that finish date is actually presented, it is in a table. If I click in the start date, I can see that that's in a table too. Now they're not actually in the same table, in fact these are two separate tables and you can see also that they do slightly overlap. But one important feature of how they're done here is that by putting them in a table you have access to field values. 
and the particular task that enables you to find the start and finish date of a project is the project summary task. So if you look over at the field list on the right, and let me just make this a little bit wider, and look down at outline level, you can see the outline level is project summary. And the field that is selected is the start date. And you'll see if I was to click in the finish date, it's very similar. We have our outline level project summary. But if I scroll down, I would expect to see that as finish date. So that basically explains where we're getting these two dates from. Now, these two little tables are not particularly well set up. They kind of crash into each other. And the one on the left with the start date seems to have the text left justified. And the one on the right also seems to have the text left justified, which doesn't really make any sense because you really want the first one left justified and the right one right justified. So again, I'm going to click in my text box. I'm going to go up to Table Tools. I'm going to jump across to Layout. And here I have my alignment group, and these are my text alignment options. So I'm actually going to align this one to the right. And I'm going to drag that over very slightly. Something else you'll notice here is that the start and finish dates for the project have a grey font. So the text is a lighter colour than, say, in Project Overview. So if I just click on one of those tables, so I'm clicked in the start date just here, and go up to the Table Tools Design tab, and click on the little launcher in the bottom corner of Word Art Styles, it brings up a Format Shape pane. And at the moment, text options are selected. And this is where I can come to format the text. So I can click on the Text Fill, and select something in here. And I can also click on the text outline as well and select a particular option. So bear in mind that text fill is the colour of the text itself rather than any outline that may be visible on the text. So I'm going to click on the drop down just here and I'm just going to select a kind of, uh, let's say, a mid-tone uh, grey just to make that a little bit darker. And I'm just going to do the same for the finish date as well. So let's highlight that. Select the color drop down. And select our gray color. So that's a very quick overview, but hopefully you can see there how to change the formatting of text in a text box. So let's move on to the next element of this report. And the next element is indeed also a table. But this table has two rows, and one of the rows, the top row, is in effect a heading. It says percentage complete. And the second row is not a heading. This one has percent complete for the whole project, and therefore, as you probably work out by now, the outline level selected is project summary. And there is only one task at that level, the project summary task. And if you look in this selected fields pane, you can see percentage complete is selected just here. So first of all, with that table selected, let's go to the design tab. I'm just going to close that format shape pane to give me a little bit more room. And in the table tools, you can see how we can achieve that header row. We have an option for header row in the table style options group. If I was to deselect that, you'll see that that header row disappears, but that doesn't look too great, so let's put that back on. It's also worth noting on the Design tab that you can choose a table style as well. So if you wanted to change the colour, then you could change it to something like that or whatever you desire. Now the other particular thing I want to do there is to make the table a little bit more compatible with the widths of the other objects around. So I'm slightly tempted to centre the heading and the percentage, but I'll leave those for the moment. Now, as we carry on moving down that first column of the report, hopefully you'll start to recognize things now. So for instance, if I click on the table down here, you can certainly see that that is a table, and you can certainly see, I hope, that it must have a header row checkbox checked there. And you can see a table style is also applied, 
And what I want to do is I want to make it a bit more of the style of the one further up. So I'm gonna make it kind of this gold color. So I'm gonna go up to my table styles and I'm just going to select this yellow one just to make it in line with the one above. And you can also see that at this time, I'm not looking at the project summary task. I'm looking at a very specific selection of tasks. Now for each of those tasks, what I have displayed is the name. So note the checkbox there for name. So if you look in the tasks field, you can see I have name selected and that's what I have in this table. And if I scroll down, you'll also see that I have finish selected as well, which is what the second column is in this table. Now above this table, what I have here is another text box. And it's another text box that's a little bit wider than it needs to be. So let me just change that now by dragging that in. So the question here is what is selecting these specific tasks? Well, if you look at the text above it, milestones due and milestones that are coming soon. There is some sort of filter in force that is causing those tasks to be selected. And the filter that is in force is this one, the upcoming milestones. So the question is, what does the upcoming milestones filter actually do? And that's a question I'm going to leave with you. This isn't an exercise, it's the end of the section. I want you to find out what the upcoming milestones filter does in project 2019 in your installation. Bearing in mind, of course, that somebody may have changed it. And that's the point at which we're going to continue at the next section, so I'll see you then. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now to get a free Microsoft Project 2019 course, including downloadable exercise files, go ahead and click right over there. And click right over there to watch all the videos in this Project 2019 Beginners Playlist.